Hey guys, my name is Brandon, and I would like to welcome you to my first weather briefing. To start off, I'd like to take a look at the current conditions over the country as a whole. Okay, I'd like to take a look at the surface pressure chart first. And as we can see in this chart, it looks like most of the United States is dealing with high pressure systems besides the western part, which does have a low pressure system in Idaho, as well as one over there near to the south of New Mexico. Now, there is a large cold front moving to the southeast that spans from uh, northern Canada to Arkansas. In our local area, we have a warm front that is moving in from the south, and that is currently over South Dakota. There's also a cold front to the west of that warm front that is over Idaho moving towards the Wyoming and Montana area. So looking at this U.S. visible satellite image, we can see there are many clouds right now over the United States. Besides, mainly in the Northeast, there are a lot of thunderstorms up there and participation going on, which we'll look at later. Uh, we do have some clouds over here in southern North Dakota and northern South Dakota. And that's with that thunderstorm moving in to the east and to the fogger area. And uh, out towards the west, we have some fairly high clouds out there in northern California. And other than that, there's really not much going on. So next up, we'll be taking a look at the National Weather Radar. Uh, here you can see that participation thunderstorms are currently moving across the country. Uh, there's really not much happening up in our area of North Dakota, Montana area, but there is that one system that is moving east towards the Fargo area. It shouldn't hit us. It should stay east and not move north. We also have a lot of development happening in the northeast coast. With all that participation movement that's uh, starting to move towards out to the ocean. Uh, we also have a lot of, you can see there's a lot of popcorn thunderstorms kind of popping up in the south due to the excessive heat and large amount of moisture being by the ocean. And there is some uh, participation from Texas that's starting to form. So, so after looking at that, uh, the current radar, we can look at the convective outlook chart chart and this is you know, the chance of thunderstorms and their severity and now looking back at the radar chart we can see the correlation here there is some chance for general thunder up in the northeast as well as Texas and the southeastern portion as well as the southern North Dakota area and most of the country is under a, a general thunderstorm chance but there is a marginal chance for severe weather up in uh, northern central Montana that we should keep a lookout for All right, so the last chart we'll be looking at for the current conditions nationally will be uh, this freezing level chart. Now uh, we can see the freezing levels across the United States are fairly consistent towards the central part of the United States or the Midwest and part of the West Coast. We can see they're at the above near 15,000 and up to 17,000. And towards the East Coast and as well as the West Coast and the Wisconsin, Mon Wisconsin and Minnesota area, you can see they're around 13,000 up to 15,000. That's pretty much it for the United States, although towards Arizona and New Mexico, there are freezing levels above 17,000. And towards the state of Oregon, the freezing levels do get below 9,000 to 11,000. Okay, so next we'll take a look at our uh, local current conditions here in the Grand Forks area. Okay, so here's another uh, visible satellite image that's for the area, the Midwest area with uh, Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Uh, there's not much going on besides those clouds out there as we've seen before in uh, the Fargo-Moorhead area with that thunderstorm moving into the east. So that, like I said before, it shouldn't be a problem for us. We shouldn't have to deal with any of that, but just keep a lookout for it. Okay, so looking at this zoomed in radar of North Dakota, we do have a better vision of the type of participation thunderstorms that are moving into the Fargo Moorhead area. Um, most of this is bringing light rain, however, there are areas, uh, especially in South Dakota, we can see the north northeastern part of South Dakota, we can see there's some heavy rain and moderate to heavy rain building up there, as well as the southern part of North Dakota and central part, there is some moderate rain building there as well. But other than that, it's just little light rain coming through. 
Okay, so looking at these meteors taken from Grand Forks Tower, we can see today was a fairly nice day for Grand Forks. Uh, we didn't have any clouds, but they did. There was a few clouds at you know four thousand and nine thousand and eight thousand, and they went up to probably about two zero zero. Uh, the ceiling was scattered at seventy five hundred, although that's still a little bit high. Uh, the wind was fairly moderate today, uh, reaching up to twenty knots, gusting. But other than that, it stayed around fourteen and eleven and nine. It was a fairly hot day, reaching a 26 Celsius, and staying around that mid-20s area for the most of the day. All right, so next up we're going to take a look at the forecasted national conditions. So based on these prognostic charts, uh, going into Saturday morning, these are valid until uh, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, the weather in Grand Force will continue to stay fair. However, there will be some marginal VFR conditions. Uh, with the ceilings between 1 and 3,000 visibility between 3 to 5 miles towards the area of Tennessee, uh, West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina. And it will be some moderate turbulence in the northwestern United States, northeastern United States, as well as the Arizona, New Mexico area, with tops being around 1 5,000. So overall, the weather is looking pretty good so far for our area. All right, so uh, to wrap up our forecasted uh, national conditions. We'll look at another convective outlook chart. Uh, this is valid from 7 a.m. local time on Saturday to uh, 7 a.m. local time on Sunday. And there isn't a large change from the last convective outlook chart besides the state of North Dakota having a slight and marginal risk for severe weather. But other than that, uh, a large portion of the country is just staying in the chance for general thunder. All right, so we're almost done here. Uh, last, we're going to finish off this brief scene. Let's see how the Grand Forks area is forecast to look in the next couple of days. Actually, right, so looking at this terminal air forecast, looks like the clouds will remain at higher altitudes, uh, with the lowest being forecasted, a few clouds at fall level 200, and uh, also with few clouds at fall level 250 at around 5, correction, around uh, noon tomorrow. And uh, the winds are supposed to pick up a little bit, getting to gusting 12 to 25 knots tomorrow afternoon, and the uh, visibility is supposed to drop a little bit, out uh, to 6 miles, where it was previously 10 miles today. So overall, it's going to be some nice weather. Um, maybe the Cessnas won't get to fly, but it'll be alright. Alright, so next up is a winds of law forecast, and looking mainly at Grand Forks and Ale Alexandria, as these are the two stations close to us. The winds will primarily be coming out of the southwest with speeds staying around the 30 knots area with Alexandria. And uh, Grand Fork speeds are uh, actually going to be higher than that. They'll be uh, staying in the mid 30s at 3,000 to 6,000 feet. And at 9,000 feet, their speeds will drop to around 26 knots. Alright, so lastly, looking at the graphical forecast radiation chart, uh, this is at the max, the furthest I can go in the future at 4 a.m. Uh, it's obvious that there isn't much going on. The skies will be pretty much clear throughout the whole state of North Dakota, and winds are going to be fairly light, uh, with the max looking like 15 knots. But other than that, it'll stay around 10 knots in Devil's Lake in the Grand Forks area. So, we like like a good day to fly tomorrow, but maybe uh, not tomorrow night, with the chance of thunderstorms starting to move in, uh, which could turn severe. So, it's important to just look out for that. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening to my first weather briefing. See you later.